Hi, this is Kessel Fikowski, and in this video, we're going to cover Unit 1 of AP Psych in just five minutes. So let's get into it. Nature versus nurture is our opening topic, and when we talk about nature, we're talking about the hereditary influences that basically give human beings predisposed characteristics that influence all of their processes. In contrast, when you focus more on the role of the environment, talking more about nurture here, we're seeing external factors, education, family interaction, etc. And it's likely a combination of all of these, nature and nurture, not just one over the other. Now, it's really important to know the biological foundation uh, here, in particular the nervous system. Two main parts are the central nervous system, the CNS, consisting of the brain and spinal cord, and then you have the peripheral nervous system, including all nerves outside the CNS. So we have the somatic, which falls under uh, the peripheral, and we're talking about voluntary movements. And then we have the autonomic, I think that word auto, um, automatic, essentially, where you're dealing with involuntary movements. And under the autonomic, we have the sympathetic. And this is where you have emergency situations like the fight or flight uh, syndrome. And again, it's sort of an automatic response. And then we also have the parasympathetic. And this is all about homeostasis, bringing your body into balance. I like to refer to it as rest and digest here, whereas again, with the sympathetic, you're talking about, again, and more fight or flight situations. So be very familiar with the biological foundations here. Now, talking about neurons, also very, very important here. Uh, we're talking about the specialized cells here that you see on the right-hand side for electrical signaling. So some important vocab to be familiar with. Dendrites, in particular, are going to be receiving the signals, whereas the soma contains the body and the axon will carry these signals away. You then have the myelin, which deals with the fatty insulation. This also will help to speed up signal transmission. And really, without all these trans, uh, neurotransmitters, which again are these chemical signals, they will go from the axon of the neuron to the receptors onto another neuron. So again, notice the dendrites here in terms of their receptors. Now, also dealing with a very important vocab here is the action potential. So this is an electrical impulse that's going to travel down the neuron, and it is in a resting state, and it is ready to fire. So if the signal is strong enough, it will trigger, trigger the neuron to fire, which will cause a spike that travels down from the axon, similar to sort of a domino effect, essentially. It is an all-or-nothing response. The neuron either fires at full strength or not at all. Also important to know, the synapse is where the neurons are going to meet. Um, and some important uh, hormones to keep in mind here, the role of dopamine, uh, very much involved with pleasure, reward, motor control, also serotonin affecting mood, sleep, appetite, emotions. Uh, neuroreferrin, which is dealing with uh, controlling alertness, arousal, and that's where that fight or flight syndrome where we talked about comes in, and GABA. Uh, this is dealing with the brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter, so this is going to be important for calming activity, helps with anxiety control, as well as relaxation. When we get into sensation, we're talking about how we detect weak signals despite background noise, Adaptation, again, ongoing exposure is going to make you less sensitive over time. Keep in mind the role of transduction in terms of converting the sensory input, such as light or sound, into neural uh, signals that the brain can interpret, as you see here with light. In terms of vision, rods versus cones, again, rods are going to be more responsible for night, uh, works well in low light, whereas cones are much more concentrated in the center of the retina, dealing with uh, more color vision. In terms of the auditory system, again, keep that in mind with the role of sound waves entering into the outer ear through the auditory canal, ossicles in the middle ear, and then vibrations are going to reach the cochlea in the inner ear, right? So other senses to be aware of in terms of touch, this somato sensation, dealing with pressure, temperature, pain, taste with gustation. Uh, we have receptors on the taste buds that, again, we're going to use uh, to be sending information via nerves to the brain. Smell, olfaction, so again, very important of those odor molecules binding there in the vestibular sense, detecting balance and maintaining body uh, positions. Now, knowing the brain here, important. So some very important concepts here. I'm not going to read through all of them, but be familiar with the cerebral cortex, the limbic system, the brainstem, the basal ganglia, the thalamus, hypothalamus, and also some neuroimaging methods here. So for example, the CT is going to use x-ray um, images, good for brain injuries. PET scan is going to show brain activity for tasks and functions of the brain. MRI, good for looking at the structure with clear, detailed images, whereas an fMRI is going to look at measuring blood flow changes linked to brain activity, showing both structure and function. So there are some advantages, disadvantages for each one of those. So here is a good uh, diagram here. I would be very familiar with just the main parts. You don't have to go deep into the weeds here. And then our last part here is the role of sleep. So keep in mind with the circadian rhythm, these are 24-hour biological clock here. Um, this is going to be very much controlled by the hypothalamus that's going to respond to light and dark signals. Uh, so keep in mind anything from screen use to jet lag can really impact this. 
Functions of sleep, everything from restoration, memory, consolidation, growth, really, really important, especially in young kids, newborns uh, in particular. Keep in mind that with sleep, you just don't go into a deep sleep. There are various stages here. So we have non-rapid eye movement, NREM, not NREM uh, one, which is your light sleep. Two, it will be a deeper sleep. And three, again, that's where your much deeper sleep is going to come. Sometimes refer to a slow wave sleep. So think delta waves, for example. And this is the most restorative uh, type of sleep here. Um, we also have, of course, rapid eye movement. This is where your vivid dreaming is going to happen here. Um, also, brain activity is going to be similar to being awake, but your body is paralyzed to prevent you from acting out any dreams here. Um, you do have some common conditions here from narcolepsy, insomnia, sleep apnea. But these are the main things that I would know.